Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. I know you guys are going to enjoy this video a lot. You're in the print on demand space. Today we're going to talk about how to create stickers with Leonardo AI. Now, just as a preview, the last video I made on this YouTube channel was about Mid Journey stickers. Now, Mid Journey is cool because you don't have to type that much and, and there's not a lot of work to create the stickers. Mid Journey just gets the concept, they get what you want to make, and, and they really do a good job at that. But Stable Diffusion is different. If you use like a just a regular Stable Diffusion and you try to make your stickers, it's just not going to come out right. And I'll show you different examples of what I did wrong and what I'm going to do right and, and essentially how I set it up to where I fine-tuned it in a way that I want. So I'm just going to go over here and log into my account so I can show you what's going on on Leonardo AI. Now, just to FYI, guys, Leonardo AI is a, is a Stable Diffusion app. However, what I do want to say with Leonardo AI is that Right now, it's like temporarily free. Okay, they're they're gonna release their paid plans very very soon, and I can't wait for that because there's a lot of stuff that I want to make. But regardless, I could spend a whole day showing you around Leonardo AI's website. I'm just gonna take you straight to how I set up my stickers, and I'll kind of take you how I went through this. So you could see here, all these stickers created, they're not that bad. They they don't look too bad. Um, I'll kind of take you through my whole personal feed and you could see them actually improve over time So right now we're scrolling down the ones that I created up here are the most recent creations, right? And the more I scroll down I'll scroll down a little bit slower just so that everybody can get a glimpse of what's going on here The more I scroll down the worse they're gonna get right because I was just learning learning the process learning the process And you guys are gonna essentially watching this video so that you don't have to deal with what I did um, so you could see here just a ton of different stuff I was testing out and trying. Um, see, this is where they get bad. Like right here, these are pretty good. Um, here are pretty decent. I wouldn't say they're the best. This is this is like a good, decent photo, and I'll kind of show it to you right now. Not too bad of a, a sticker, you know. Um, and I tested some, some stuff that has a lot of data on the Internet with. It still didn't come out as good as I wanted it to. Uh, but this is where I was running into issues. So right here. So this was the first sticker creation I created. So it was like these four that came out first. And these four, you could tell, they're just not the quality that I was looking for. Like when you search a YouTube video for like stickers, they come out much, much better. Now, this is not bad. I could sit there and I can erase all the background that. But I'm talking about the actual art. It doesn't have like this, this I don't want to say 3D style, but like a kawaii style. It doesn't have that. And so I said, what is a way that I can improve this? I personally don't have the capability. I think out of all these different stickers, this one came out to be the best, okay, uh, in the beginning. But even then, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be proud of selling something like this, right, with Stable Diffusion. So I said, what can I do? And that's where I jumped on the fine-tune models. And, I, and, and I'm going to explain what I'm talking about here. If you go over here to fine-tune models on Leonardo AI, there are these different models that are created for you. And the way they work is that you give the, the machine like anywhere from like 10 to like 40 images, let's say. And it will understand those. You don't have to type anything for it. It just understands what those images are. And then when you use that model to create images, it will create it off the back of those images as like a, I don't want to say a template, but like as a, as a focal point, right? So, for example, this is one of the really cool models that I've seen. This is called the Shields model. And you can create shield images, like so many of them, uh, because it was given images to train, like a giving a, a trained data set, right? And whatever kind of characteristics you come out, a regular person with no experience with AI can, can produce some amazing stuff, like something like this, right? Which is just incredible, in my opinion. So what was the model that I used? So I actually created my own model. And uh, this is here, my own model. The first model I created was this one. I called it the sticker maker model. And I actually want to see if I could show you guys here the art that I put inside of it. So uh, let's go ahead and let's see here. Let's go to community models, platform models, favorite models. Let me see here. Platform models. Oh, training and data sets. There we go. All right. So I'll kind of show you here. Edit the data set. This is the current data set of what I added. So these images here are all like different styles of the images that I want to create. Now what I realized is that my selection was pretty limited. I added a lot of pictures of like cats, basically fur animals with, with pointy ears, 
which works well for foxes, which works well for cats, which works well even for dogs. Um, but it doesn't work well if I tell it to, like, for example, create a picture of, like, a dragon. That doesn't work well at all, right? So I'll, I'll show you different examples. But I gave it this data set, and I hit, I hit train model. And what it did now is it started training on the identity. And it's actually remarkable of what it can do. But these are all images that I gave it. And you can find images that you like of anything out there on the internet and give it a certain style of training, right? And so I gave it these images to train off of. And so then what I did, and, and I'll take you back to my personal feed here of the different images that I started to create, and I started to get better, right? I started to get better, and I'll kind of show you. The first model that I had was creating these images. So it started off like right here, creating images like this. Right, so this is not ideal. Uh, like something like this, just just to me, it looks ugly. All right, but I'm sure it would be better if I upscaled it. But I upscaled something like this. This is probably one of the best ones in the beginning. Then what I did was I gave it another data set, which is the one that you you were seeing now, and that's when I started to produce better results, like the stuff that you're seeing here. So like, for example, a photo like this, you know what I'm saying, or um. A photo like this. Now, the images are not going to be 100% perfect. You will have to do some editing. Uh, so if you have Photoshop skills, that really helps out. If you know how to use GIMP, that helps out. Uh, different things like that. Like this image, I was very, very happy with when it came out. I just think this looks phenomenal. But even though it's not perfect, it's, it's not bad, right? Um, there's, there's different things that you could do. Like this image, also, very, very good image. This is the upscaled version. I can, the way I pictured it is I can, if I wanted to make this like a legit sticker, I can erase everything around the body, like right here, uh, even this rainbow effect on the background, like just erase all of that and trim out basically the body, the head, the hat and keep it at that, right? So yeah, it will take a little bit of skill to clear it out, but you can see here they're improving, especially like a photo like this, right? So you get the concept. It looks pretty decent, right? Um, and then as I got better... Uh, I started playing around with different settings. This is what I had to learn as well, is that these models, they get trained on a certain image size. And if you start playing around and altering with the image size based on what it's not trained on, it will start to produce worse results. And so I was a little confused here for a minute. Uh, uh, not for a minute, but for a while, because I, uh, I spent multiple days doing this. But then I took a step back and I started creating better results. You can see here like this... This image here, I was very proud of this image, the way this came out. Very, it came out very, very well, I think. Um, uh, and you can see here just the improvement over time. So I started testing different things. I felt like I lost my way a little bit. I didn't know why the, the images... Now, the hindsight is 2020. I'm telling you why now. But um, in the beginning, it wasn't like that. So I'll just kind of show you how what you can do. Um, you can upscale images. Whenever an image is created, it might not be perfect right away. right? So like, let's say it looks like this. This was the original image for this one that it came out. When I upscaled it, it looked like this. Significantly better, as you can see. Now, in very rare circumstances, it's not always better when it's upscaled. And what I mean by that is you might have to use an upscaler from outside of uh, Leonardo to get a better result. Sometimes there's more detail in the original and then upscale. But either way, this looks great. So just download it, right? And the way to upscale an image is very simple. I'll show you kind of an image that's not upscaled. You go here, and you literally just click the upscale button. Now, I already did a whole ton of upscaling. So you can see here, I have um, every upscale you use is one token. And they implemented this feature yesterday. And uh, they're implementing a lot of features, but I'm really excited for it because I know I definitely will be a customer. And um, uh, this, is, this is what I'm saying here. So I upscaled this image, okay? When I upscale, look, take a look at this. I want to show you guys this. First of all, original image is right here. Okay, this is the original. When I upscaled it, it looks like this. The detail, a lot of the detail went away, right? Um, this is this is decent too, but not as good as this one. So then I downloaded it just the way it is, and then I upscaled it on a different platform, like a different website. And uh, to me, it looked much better. I, if I find the image, I'll put it up, but... Um, I just have a ton of files on my computer right now. This whole AI stuff is just literally taking over my computer. I have tons of content, which is actually a problem because it's taking my focus away from a lot of other work, and I have to focus on actually doing work as opposed to just sitting there and creating art. But um, with that being said, there is uh, – uh, and this is here where, once again, where I was experiencing – 
the images were just not coming out properly because the model was trained on 512 by 512 pixels. And so um, when I increased that size, I started getting images like this, right? Which looks okay, but this is not, like for me, it's not monetizable. I would not be able to sell this at least comfortably. Like if I'm going to put my energy out there to sell a product on my own website or sell it on, uh, you know, some sort of, you know, wherever it is, I want it to look halfway decent. You know, I don't want it to look all weird, like some sort of conjoined twin concept. I don't want that. You know what I mean? So this looks pretty good as well. And this is actually pretty cool. Um, I didn't request this in the prompt, but there are four different images in one. I can upscale this and then kind of divide them and clear out the backgrounds and stuff. And it's kind of like, you know, getting a four for one deal. Um, but this is, again, where I was running into these issues. I, the prompt was very simple. A sticker, kawaii blue teddy bear wearing a rainbow pair of glasses. Very simple prompt, but it couldn't do it because I was messing around with the different settings in the um, in the art, right? So that's something I want you guys to be aware of. Uh, so when you do create this kind of stuff, don't, you know. I tried image to image stuff, so like image to image creation, but... It wasn't ideal as well. Um, this is a really good photo. I think this came out really well. I can go ahead and clear this out, make it really easy. And what I plan to do in the future is I plan to create my own models with some really, really fine-tuned images. And just kind of understand the fine-tuning models, you know, concept. Um, so you can see here, they're getting better. So they slowly go from, like, images like this to full-size images. This is a really good image. Even though this didn't come out the way I wanted it, this is a really good. I got to upscale this and make it better. I'm definitely going to use that one. But you can see here, I upscaled, I believe I upscaled this. So I'll show you kind of here the original. And this is the upscaled. Now, just to show you the prompt. The prompt is right here. A sticker, quiet blue teddy, uh, teddy bear wearing a rainbow pair of glasses. That's it. It wasn't complicated at all. And that's what I realized is that the better you can fine tune and the better you can train your model, you can get some tremendous results. And this is with stuff like simple stuff like stickers. Imagine what you could do with other styles of art. It's just incredible. Um, in fact, I'm actually going to create a model where I train it based on like this style of images, like this kind of art, like right here, like something like this or like this. And by the way, when I created these images, they were never there was no name of any artist uh, involved. This is like straight up from scratch kind of thing. So pretty pretty insane of the stuff you could do now i didn't create these images on leonardo i'm a subscriber from multiple multiple different softwares right now uh, just testing different things just learning how things work uh this was a i guess you could say a cool image it looked kind of weird at first but like you could see here look like this i figured let me see how it's going to come out it came out like this really not too bad um clearly with the upscaling there is some sort of art generation going on because uh if you look here, these are just like red dots and then there's like some, I don't know what that is. That looks like chicken scratch. And then when I upscale it, it looks completely different, right? So definitely you can make a lot of money selling these. I don't think you can make a lot of money selling on, on Redbubble. Like if you're going to sell stickers on Redbubble, you're going to get what? 25 cents, 50 cents, a dollar, a few, four or five dollars. Like really, you're not going to make that much. In my opinion, putting them on your own website is better creating a website, selling them, uh, bringing the traffic in from Etsy is very powerful. Um, this is a great photo I like. I like creating that. There's some foxes uh, right here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what I think is, is like I might produce certain results and I'll put them on my Super Lance. Uh, for, I'll put the uh, data training sets for people to access on my Super Lance. So f for those who don't know, I, I just created a, a Super Lance relatively recently. And I'll just kind of show you what it is. So Superlance is a place where you can like chat with me and contact me and things like that. And in the product section, I'll create the training data. Like I'll add the images for the training data sets and probably give them to you guys at a cheap cost. If you want to replicate like the same idea of images, which is pretty cool. But that that's something in the future. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, so here, once again, upscaled image. For an image like this, what I'd probably do is... I'd get rid of all this gray and this white outline and this section right here. So like this, you know, whatever that is. And then I'd probably, I'd probably make this just like pure white right here. Almost like a tail and then get rid of this extra stuff, you know, just like that. Um, let's see here. Um, so these are 
Let's see what this is. Yeah, so 640 by 640 resolution. I increased the resolution size. It didn't come out ideal. But once again, if I upscale this, this will look different, right? Um, let's see here. So here, what is what resolution is this? This is also 640, but it came out good. Um, let's see. We got more here. We got more different different images. This is, I believe, this one. This one was one of my favorites. Upscaled this. And as soon as they release their paid plans, I'm going to buy as much as I can so that I can upscale as much as I can. Um, and I just have some really good ideas for these, like print-on-demand stuff. Uh, check out this picture right here. So let me show you this. Um, this is the upscaled version. This is the original. Right? So this can you know, pretty good. Comes out pretty good. Uh, I could just imagine the use cases. Like, if you're a writer, if you write ebooks for KDP, you can you can create art like this. Like, you can create children's stories. You can do so many things with art like this. You know what I'm saying? So, definitely, this is a big win if you know how to use it properly. But if you're going to sell on marketplaces, it's going to get very tough for you. I, I could say that for sure. Like, if you're going to, if your main focus is a Redbubble or a Zazzle or a Society6, you got to realize that everybody else is doing the exact same thing. And so, the only thing that changes is your competition. That's the only thing that changes is the amount of competition, um, which is a problem. Now, Redbubble and all that stuff is great, especially before AI. You could have a lot of things to your advantage. If you had a software, if you had... Um, if you had different tools you can access, maybe you had a certain strategy, if you had virtual assistants. Now, AI has leveled the playing field for everybody, which really means that you're not going to have really, really, some really, really big winners unless they do something extremely different. And the only way they could do that is just mass now, just mass quantity of creation way more than before. And Redbubble inherently knows this. And, and Redbubble, for example, they cut down their production from 60 per person per day to now 30 now you got to think logically why they would do that uh server costs are tremendous there it's not free you know they pay for these server costs for people to put up their designs and so i wouldn't be surprised in the future if they cut it down even more and also if they started closing down people's accounts um or not even allowing them to create accounts just based on quality alone because you're gonna have everybody it's so easy for everybody to now create stuff so um, that's just a little, you know, a little FYI, but at the end of the day, um, AR, AI art is very, very powerful. You can make so much money off of it. You just need to know how to monetize properly. And these marketplaces are, are going to get more and more and more difficult to profit off of. Your sales are not going to go up. They're going to go down, uh, at least. And this is just the unfortunate truth. Back in 2020, I didn't think that that was going to happen. I, I do think that is now because, like I said, if the people who before used to create terrible art, right, are now creating top-notch stuff using AI, not even just stickers, but just in any in any niche of, of print-on-demand, right, they're creating all kinds of different art. You're, you're competing now with the guy that used to do terrible. Now he's doing just as good as you, if not better. It's just a scale at that point. It's a mass game at that point. Which, if you're playing that game, either you, you should either A, prepare to win if you have enough mass, you have enough virtual assistants, you have enough production, you have enough whatever, you know, AI tools, you have enough of that, and you can produce thousands a day, or, and thousands a day is, is, a, is a small amount, you'd really need a lot more than that, because competition is going to go up like crazy, and this is just the beginning, or, you're going to have to figure out a different way to sell it. And uh, you could do it on Etsy too. Etsy works, but once again, you're gonna have to run into the same problem in Etsy. Things are gonna change. Like in in a year, or two years, uh, the little guy is not gonna make any money. Like back then, we used to say if you were you were lucky on Redbubble if you uploaded like 12 designs and you got one sale a year. Now you're gonna be lucky if you upload a hundred, fifty designs and you get one sale a year. For the average, we're not talking about everybody. We're not talking about the people who do the keyword research and all that. But we're talking about the average individual. At least that's just my concept. And, uh, you know, it's just a matter of time. It's a matter of years, weeks, months, whatever. But it's a matter of time. The more people know about this, the more people get access to it, the more people use it, it's going to be all over. You know what I mean? Everybody's going to be using it. So you got to figure out a way to differentiate yourself. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video on Leonardo AI. Pretty cool software. A lot of different use cases. I mean, you can make coloring books. You could do so many different things with this. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. All right.
I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. Bye.